My name is Daisy Olson from WPMama.com, and we are going to talk about the child parent themes. Um, Relationship. <laughs> so we're gonna we're going to kind of play on that child parent child theme idea, and we're gonna kind of put some parallels to to actual childhood. So we're going to kind of build a little bit from just something really basic and then build up into something much more complicated. So, uh, let's go ahead and get started. So, first of all, a little bit of vocabulary, yes? Would you use this when you're having more than one blog, or when would you use it? We'll parent? talk about that. So let's hold all the questions till the end, and then we can um, answer questions all in one block once we get done with the session. Okay, so, first of all, what is a parent theme? In reality, a parent theme is any theme that's being used by a child theme to support it. So, a child theme, move forward, child theme is going to be a subset of theme files consisting of at least a style.css file that's going to reference back to a parent theme, which is going to contain everything else that that theme needs in order to function. So, anything that doesn't exist in the child theme needs to exist in the parent theme. Template files. Those are the files in your theme that, that will call up specific types of content in your, in your WordPress site. So if you have a single .php, that's going to call up uh, when you have a single post or a page or page.php would call up a page. Index.php would be your kind of default call, um, backup if, if it doesn't find anything else. And we're going to talk a little bit about uh, file hier hierarchy of what exactly um, is going to happen kind of behind the scenes when your WordPress site is looking for what kind of a template it needs to call back and how the child theme is going to affect that. Okay. Uh, the functions.php file is used to extend your theme. It, uh, there are some very specific things things that would go into that functions file, uh, like calling in sidebars, registering sidebars. But one of the th unique things about the functions file is that it's actually going to use both the functions file in the child <coughs> and as well also in the parent. The style sheet. Without a style sheet, you don't have a theme. That's the one file that it, that uh, WordPress uses to figure out that you're, it is actually looking at a theme. So, and in addition to that, it's also going to decide what exactly your site is going to look like, rather than just being um, a lot of content. And a theme framework. A parent, team, a parent theme can be, or contain a theme framework, it does not always. But a lot of times when you hear about parent themes, they a lot of times will have a, if they're being referred to as a parent theme, then probably it contains some kind of a theme framework that's, that's made to, to make it a little bit more extensible, a little easier to build upon. It'll have hooks and filters and things that you can use to um, develop that child theme to look and act differently from, from another child theme using the same parent. So the question is, why would you use child themes? What is it about the, the parent-child um, the concept that makes it a, a good idea when you're when you're starting to develop themes? Yes. Because you can leave the regular theme code untouched. Because you can leave the regular theme code untouched, right? So future-proof and upgradability. So let's say, for example, you get your nice, brand new, shiny WordPress site, and you've got the default theme. Okay? You don't want to go any further. You don't want to go out to the theme repository and look for a, a, a nice theme that you like right out of the box. You want to start playing with that default theme. So you go in and you make all the changes and you make it look totally different than the default, but you made all those changes right in the, in the files that come with WordPress. Anybody know what's going to happen the first time you use the auto upgrade? Yeah. Everything's gone. The whole thing, it'll just get completely wiped out because that, for, that theme is part of the core. So, and every time you upgrade the core using the automatic upgrade, 
It completely replaces the entire core, including most of the files that you may have changed. So that's a really extreme example. Most of the time, you're not going to be using the default, default theme to modify. But if you have gone out and found a really great theme, Great development, great support. They, they keep things up to date. As new features are added to WordPress, they build them into that theme. Well, if you take that theme and you start changing it around, well, suddenly you're really locked in. You, you can't. It's, it's going to be really hard for you to upgrade to add in all the features that maybe the theme author is providing you because you've d gone in and changed a whole bunch of stuff. And so you're, it means that maybe like thumbnail images that just came in 2.9, well, you might not be able to use those very easily without figuring out how to add that code into the theme yourself. So that's a really big argument for using the parent-child um, setup, is that you're, you're keeping all of your changes separate from the actual theme. Rapid development. By just creating a custom style sheet, you can completely change the look of most themes. Not all themes, some of them are, don't play terribly well with the child theme idea. But a lot of things, you're, if you just create a, a child based on the parent, you pull in the style sheet from the parent, which we'll look at, and then you start making the modifications that you want, and then you have a child theme that looks different. Child themes in a multi-blog, multi-site environment are really great. In, in WordPress MU, which will be changing shortly, um, you might have 100 themes. Well, if you need to upgrade 100 themes to add in that new functionality that maybe came out, that's probably not going to be very much fun. But if you have one parent theme and 100 child themes, you upgrade the parent theme and then all of that stuff is going to float down to the child themes as long as there aren't a lot of style changes. So um, that's, a, that's a pretty big thing. One thing that's interesting about using a parent-child theme set up in a multi-blog site um, setup is that you don't have to have that parent theme activated in MU. Okay? So you don't have to have it visible to your users if this is something that you're going to do. You can keep that turned off and the child theme is turned on, and the child theme is still going to be able to see that parent theme. Child themes are really simple for non-coders to start with, because really all you're, at the basic level, all you really need to worry about is styles. If you can learn some cascading style sheet methods, then you're going to be able to start with a child theme and you're not going to have to touch any PHP um, right away. If you're using, specifically if you're using a theme framework that works on the parent-child format, you're going to be, have something that's really powerful if you're a developer. So the, these frameworks have been built with the idea of making it for a developer to be able to take what's there, change it, extend it, modify it, without actually touching the core. You do everything in the child theme. There's actually a lot more than style sheets that you can do in a child theme. And the frameworks that work on this idea are built for that. So let's talk about the files that you find in a theme. Um, when you pull up a page or any item in WordPress, WordPress is going to look to go through a series of decisions. It's going to think about what it is that you're trying to get. So if it's the home page, you can see at the top it says it's home, then the first thing it's going to look for is the home.php. If it doesn't find a home.php, then it's going to go to index.php. And as you go down, it's first going to look for that, that item, and then it's going to go through a hierarchy of files until it finds the one that it needs. So it's going to start really specific and then go out to really general. When you add in a child theme, then it's going to first look in the child for that, and then it's going to look in the parent, and it's going to go back to the child for the next one, and then it's going to go to back to the, the parent for that one, and it's going to bounce back and forth between the parent and the child until it finds the file that it needs. But it's going to try to find everything in the child first, because if 
that file exists in the child that assumes that that's the one that you want to use. So there was a time when the child themes didn't really fully support that concept. It was only a few different files that it would look for. But now that's been extended a lot, I think as of 2.7. So getting to know the parent theme. When you're looking at a theme that you think you might want to use as a parent theme to start as use as a starting point for developing your child, you'll probably want to get to know how the structure of the theme is set up. What, are, what kind of divs are you going to be using, the classes, or how are you going to be able to change the styles? Opening up that, st that style, that CSS, is a good place to start. It's going to give you an idea of what kinds of things you're going to be able to use. If you are using Firefox, I highly recommend the Firebug plugin. If you've never used it, it's, it's a really great way to learn CSS. It's because you can really see what exactly is, is being done to each of the elements on your page. Um, and you can change things real time and see what your changes would look like if you were to make them into your files. So. Getting to know how your styles are set up is going to give you an idea of whether or not you're going to be able to find the flexibility to get the design that you want. The output. For a basic child theme, you're going to be working with the way that the theme puts out the information. The content is going to stay the same to start with. So if you have a meta line that, or something that has the date, in, in the somewhere on there, you don't want that date, you might want to think about whether or not this is the right parent theme because you're probably, unless you're working with a framework, you're not going to necessarily be changing the items that are being displayed on your page. You're going to be just changing the way they look. So you want to have the basic, the basic <laughs> content that's coming back to you. You want that to be pretty much what you want, especially if you're just starting with this. Um, if you're just using a regular theme as a parent, that's something to consider, is do I like the, the things that it's giving back to me? Dashboard level options. A lot of themes have options pages that will let you set certain things at the database level. Um, sometimes you'll find an options page that isn't going to work once you, act, once you set it up as a child theme. So you probably want to test that before you go too far. And um, you can do that really easily, which we'll talk about. So if, you, if your options pages still work once you've implemented a child, a child theme, then you can go ahead and move forward. Um, some themes have very extensive options pages. Um, if that's the case, then it might not be a great candidate for being a parent theme. Mostly the reason being that if, if there are a lot of options being set at the database level, it may actually be that you don't need a, a child theme in order to get those design modifications that you want. So uh, custom page templates. A lot of themes will have custom page templates. Let's say they, you would want a custom um, category page. And rather than using a plugin to create the list of categories, you could have a page that would do that, and then you would create a page on your site, set it to that page template, and then it would list the, the categories in that example. Uh, if you don't have the custom page templates that you need, you can always make them and put them in the child theme. Framework components. So if you're working with a framework, um, some examples of frameworks are thematic, hybrid, um, new one from Studio Press is called Genesis, and um, what they've done is they've built in these powerful engines that are going to let you manipulate what your output is going to look like. So um, it, it'll give you basically it'll it'll send it to you one way, but it, then it gives you the ability to go in and change what you get back out. So let's say if you wanted to change your navigation bar, well there will be a function that you can hook into or a filter to be able to change the way that your navigation displays back to you. So, so once you've looked at your parent theme, you're going to ask yourself, is this theme cut out for parenthood? Is it going to meet my needs 
if I were to create a child theme for it. So let's start looking at what a child theme would look like. So when we first start, we have basically a blank slate. We have a style.css file. It's going to be held in a, in a directory in the wp-themes directory on your site, the same place that you would put any theme. You're going to put it in just install, just like you would install any other theme. And you're going to activate it, just like you would activate any other theme. The difference is, this is the top of a style.css file. It looks almost identical to just about any theme that you would find. You have your theme name, a URL, a description for the theme, the author of the theme, an author URL, um, what version it is, but the difference is the template. The template is where it's going to say, oh, this is a child theme. If I don't find something that I need here, this is where you go looking for it. So in this case, the template is looking for the Genesis template, and it's looking for the, the name of the directory. So it, a lot of times it's going to be a lowercase, no spaces, um, thing that's going to look for the name of the directory that that parent theme is, is located in. So what's going to happen if you have this, this is all you need to get started. If you had this file in a directory, in your WP themes directory, you would be able to activate this theme. If you view your site after activating it, you're going to get a completely unstyled version of your site because the child theme is going to look for all of your page templates, all of your template files, um, and your functions.php from the parent. It's not going to look for style sheets. Okay, so we move on to infants, total dependence. So we can <coughs> import the styles from the parent theme in that style.css file would look something along the lines of this. In this case, we're going back out to the Genesis uh, directory and then pulling the style.css from that file, from that theme, which would then give you a carbon copy, essentially, of the Genesis theme. So next we move on to childhood we can start adding styles to override the styles from the imported file. So just for a quick example, we can set the body, body to a background color, add some margin. You can just keep on going from there. Any of the styles that exist um, in the parent theme style sheet, you can override here. It's, it, it's because what you're doing is you're importing that style sheet, and then everything below that is going to, to be the next level down in it in the cascading, so it's going to look for, it'll import, and then anything below that's going to override it. So next we're going to go on, and we're going to give this theme a little more independence. So we can add some hooks. A hook is essentially a place to insert extra code into your theme. So um, there are a couple of hooks built into WordPress. WP head, WP footer, things like that. So you would be able to, in the, my example here, here we're going to add an action. This would be in your functions.php file in the child theme. So this would be adding another file to your child theme. We would be, for, we'll look lower on the page first. We're going to have a function. So we call it, it's called your function. And then we have a variable of content, and then a little bit of HTML code there, and then we're going to call that back out. This is not the only way to do this. This is a way to do this. You could also close out the PHP at the end of that first line, and then open it again and just insert your HTML in there. But above that, we have an add action, and in the first part of it, we have where we want it to go, which is WP footer, and after that is your function, the name of the function that you are going to be inserting into that point in your theme. Um, theme frameworks are going to give you all kinds of these insertion points within the theme to be able to add things. You might be able to 
put something before the content of your post. After, you might be able to put something in the header, in the footer, in the sidebars, all over the place. So in the case of the Genesis theme framework, there are currently 44 uh, of these points where you can insert extra things. So, <laughs> um, so that would be to add extra things in. If you wanted to start to not just work with what the parent theme gives you, but maybe really alter it, you can actually start um, overriding the, the the files, the template files of the parent theme. A good way to do that would be to copy the file from the parent into your child. Well, now that it exists in your child, it's going to use the copy in the child. So let's say if you wanted to uh, change your comments, comments.php file is a lot of times there. If you wanted to change something about it, you would copy that from the parent theme over to the child theme so that you know that all the code works. And then you would make your modifications. Well, now your modifications are safe in your child. So if you're working with a regular theme, other repository, standalone theme, this is a good way to go about doing this. Because then you, you're saving your, your changes without touching the original. My, the way I look at, at uh, looking at changing an original um, theme is you don't hack the core of WordPress. Think of your original theme as its core. Don't hack it. Pull it into a child theme whenever possible and change it there. You can also add custom page templates to your child theme. So it, would, no, it might be a file that doesn't even exist in the current theme, you're adding it. You can also add template files that get more specific than the parent theme does. Let's say you have um, a specific category that you want to look differently than the other categories on your site. Well, you can use the template hierarchy to name that file so that, it, so that WordPress knows that um, category ID 235 needs to have a different template. And you can put that file in your child theme, and then whenever your WordPress site pulls up something from that category, it's going to look, or that would be a category archive, it would pull up that category <coughs> archive page, and it would look different than all the other ones. So maybe you have one where you want to show um, full posts on the page instead of excerpts. You know, that would be a really basic implementation of that. <coughs> Um, you can also add filters, if you're using a framework, to override things from your parent. Um, this, is, this is a much more advanced thing. It's very difficult to, to go over in a short amount of time, but it's something if you want to go back to the WordPress codex and do some reading up on it, do some searching on, on filters, and you can probably find a lot of information. So if that's something that you're interested in, overriding something that's in the original theme by, by changing the way that it outputs. So, we have looked at um, pulling up parent themes, um, looking at them, and we have looked at what goes into a child theme, and how you can use that child theme to um, modify without actually changing the original files. So um, what I'd like to do now is take a, as many questions as everyone has and we can try to go in a little bit more in detail. I have four blogs that use basically the same theme that I've made myself, but there are some certain things that differ on each one, like a certain header graphic and some ad parameters. And if anyone else had to modify these files, they would have to go into the header and they're not PhD. <coughs> I think I should make a child of this thing, it's basically all the same, but how would I get that parameter in there into the header? Is that a hook that would have to go up, or is that add action? Um, what you would do, if you want, this is what the way that I would go. The question is, if you have a theme that's been developed for to be used on multiple sites, and each of them would maybe have a different header image and some add parameters, the way that I would probably go after is I would probably use a child theme, but I would also probably try to keep as much of the style stuff in the, in the style sheet and not hard code the images. So if you are using a background, uh, a header image, 
instead of inserting that image into the header as an image, put it in the, as a background in the style sheet. Yes, yeah, so that's what I was doing, but it would mean the child would need to have another, you'd have to look in the child and pull that image instead of the one that's the parent. Okay. She's saying that it would have to look in the parent thing, then the child thing instead of the parent. There is a, what you would probably want to do is, is, if it's in the style sheet, you're going to be looking into the path of the style sheet, or into the, the same directory as the style sheet to find your images. So what you would want to do is have an images directory in your child theme that has all of the images for that child theme. That means that each child theme, it might be looking at the same file name, but since it's looking within that child theme for that file, it can have different images in each child. What about um, shared files that aren't standard to WordPress? So let's say that I had like a global JavaScript file, right? And it was in my parent theme. And then I had a child theme that had the global JavaScript file also, but it was a different file. Would it override that? Or does it only override, say, like page.php standard? It would depend on how that JavaScript file is being called in. What if it was just like a standard script in the header? Um, I would say that you'd probably, that's a good question. I would probably put it as a, as, as a part of the child thing that it's going to change from one side to the next. Okay. Do you think that it would load, I guess, both versions? If you're using, kind of like yeah, if you're using um, scripts, you should always be using the WordPress and Q script to pull so those like scripts in so that it's yeah. not multiplica multiplying scripts being called in from different plugins. Because if you have five plugins that are called calling the same yeah. uh, JavaScript libraries, well, you're going to have a mess on your hands. Yeah. So that's the point, that's the purpose of WordPress having a method for you to be able to, and style sheets, other than the, those kinds of things where they're in part of the theme, if your plugins are pulling style sheets, they should also be using the, the NQ style, I think it's called. Okay. Um, which, which kind of weeds out the extras. Okay. So that's just a code of, of learning to use that function so that you, um, it's good coding practice to learn to use that. Okay. I use uh, Headspace, the plugin, a lot of times called page-specific essentially do a parent-child thing using the plugin. So I have my theme that normally runs, and on a given page, I'll, through Headspace, I'll tell it to go get a different theme, uh, which could be similar or different. I'm wondering if you've ever tried that yourself, and if you've seen anything where that's less efficient or better situation compared to calling it a so, page. So, okay, so you're saying you use Headspace to call in a specific style sheet? Right, it allows me to go into the edit of a page mode within WordPress and pick a different theme. Any, anything that I've loaded up into that particular install, I can call with the Headspace plugin and use that to trigger that theme instead of the default, which could be slightly different or completely different. Um, using Headspace to call up a different theme on a page-by-page -page basis is a completely different concept than using a child theme. I know it so, um, creates a similar effect, but it's definitely different. Whether or not one is better than the other, I would probably always go for the child theme version. I think it's a little lighter, a little, um, because because in WordPress you can call up um, very specific uh, templates for pages by name, by ID, by all the slug. Um, that's probably the WordPress way to do it. You know, so if you have um, a page that a, a page, let's say, that would need to look different. Well, you could say anything in this category, a page in this category, using conditional. Um, I do a, a redirect from the category to a page, and then I set the page to that would be typically just that's the. Okay. I'm a non coder so I, I know that I'm not necessarily following <coughs> the prescribed doctrine, but I'm also trying to understand at what point I need to make the switch. Sure. So when I'm running into trouble, especially on the... So at what, as a, a non-coder, what point, at what point would you make the switch from doing it using a plug-in to doing it using the theme? And I guess that's a comfort level thing. I've done it, it's just... Mm -hmm. um, are you familiar with, with the thesis? <coughs> yes, I am. How good is that in terms of being a parent image? 
It is not a parent-child theme framework. It uses something a little bit similar in that it gives you a directory within the file, within the theme called custom, and in, within there you have any of your customizations. It is a framework in that you have hooks and filters and all of the things that a framework would have. You also have a pretty extensive um, dashboard options area where you can set a lot of parameters. How do you know if the theme is a framework? Um, they will usually advertise themselves as a framework. Okay. What does it need to be to be a framework? Uh, to be a framework, it needs to do more than just a theme. It'll have <laughs> libraries of, of functions that it calls upon to do different things. Would you say using more like Sandbox and parent? Sandbox is kind of the granddaddy of all parent child. It's, it's kind of where it all started. So it's not. In, in the current modern sense of the, the word, it probably wouldn't fit all of the, the scenarios that we talked about here, but it's, it's the basic idea where you have, you have a starting point and you build on it separately. So um, a lot of people still use Sandbox. It's, it's kind of... Well, that, that's kind of a, a stylistic thing where the plain themes would be called minimalistic. So whether or not it's... Um, just a starting point because it's a very simple theme and you can build up with it from it from within the theme or if it's designed to if a theme is designed to use as a starting point and then build on onto it and change it separately that would be the concept that we're, we're looking at here is we could have um, a starting point but anything that you do to change that starting point you do separately okay. do you have a or a framework that you would suggest for folks who want to try this for the first time? Um, in, the, in the free realm, I highly recommend Hybrid. I've used it extensively. It's very powerful. Um, if you pay, he has a, um, a paid support <coughs> membership. He um, has a lot of documentation. On the commercial side, where I, I like Genesis. I'm starting to use it. It's new. It's still being developed. It isn't actually public yet, but it will be soon. And um, so when it's ready, it might be something worth checking out. Studio, that's right. Studio Press, yes. They have really good support forms. They do have very good support forms. What if you want to create your own template and just start your, your own? If, is there, what's the, the, the out of the box blank one? Uh, the question is, what if you want to start your own theme? Um, if you wanted to start from a... There are a few places out there that have blank themes. So if you wanted to use something as a starting point to create your own theme, um, do, a, do a Google on, on blank WordPress themes or something along those lines. I think there are a few of them out there. Whether or not they're, they main, they're maintained and updated and include current features within WordPress, I can't really say. A lot of times people will make them, make them available, and then they sit there. So um, I, I don't have one other than like hybrid. Hybrid actually is a theme on its own. It, 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 if you install hybrid or, or even Genesis all of, um, and thematic, they have uh, everything you need to run it just the way it is. So they are actually a good starting point. But, but there's frameworks, so you would use that starting point, but you would build any customization separately. Uh, the best argument I heard for using a child theme was in case the parent theme gets upgraded with some new function. But if you've taken, say, Commons PHP and moved it into the child theme to override, and then Commons PHP gets upgraded by the parent theme, it'll never see that. That is true. So if you, okay, so the uh, uh, question is, um, if you have copied a file from the parent theme into the child theme and then the parent theme is changed or upgraded, the, uh, your child theme will not see those changes. And that is true. But it's a lot easier to compare three or four files with an upgraded theme than it is to completely redo every change that you've made throughout an entire theme in order to update it. So it still simplifies the process of upgrading. 
to have it to have your modifications separate because you can just compare changes. And a lot of times um, it might be just an extra line of code that's been added in, but all of your all of your basic components remain the same. So it might be just a matter of of making those modifications again or adding in the piece of code that's been added in the upgraded version. I've been using Mimbo Pro as a parent for some things because I have a built-in child for it. But I'm finding that I have to, in the CSS, you know, use you know, import for every single style rule. Is it easier in a way to just take the link, copy the CSS entirely from the parent to the child rather than just trying to pick one or two things that big? Um, the question is, is it better to import a style sheet into your child from the parent theme or to copy it in? I would say it depends. Uh, many themes will have, or frameworks might have um, structural style sheets, like, like to set up your columns. Like you might have one that will, will do a three column, two on the left, one on the right with content on the right, sidebars on the left, content on the right, or the other way around. And those style sheets, you would probably want to import those. Where the base style sheet, um, part of the idea is that if you're going to be doing really extensive changes to the parent's style sheet, you're probably better off not importing it. You're better off building it from the ground up or copying it from the parent into the child and then changing it. Um, if, if the theme frame, the theme is being developed really rapidly and they keep changing ideas in classes, well, you might end up breaking your theme along the way, but um, you would just have to, to work with that. But if you have a stable theme that, that basically the structure is staying the same, then I would say build, and you're doing really extensive changes to the styles, I would say skip the import and keep all your styles in the child. Any other questions? All right, um, we're finished just a little bit early, but I hope you all learned something. My contact information is up on the screen, and if you have any questions, I'd be happy to try to answer them for you. Where would, it, would this be available on your website? Or? Um, I will put these slides up on the share. Slide share. Slide share. Slide share. Yes, thank you. Um, and they'll, they'll also be in a post on the blog.